Hey Art Nerds, today we're taking a look at the Bien Fang watercolor brush pins. So if you're interested, keep watching. So I have reviewed many watercolor brush pins over the years. These may look a little familiar. One, they've been around for a long time, although this is the modern rebranding. And two, they're very similar in form factor to the Pintel brush pins and to the Jane Davenport watercolor markers. So we get 12 colors in a plastic sleeve. And if they are anything like I remember them being when I was an undergrad, once you remove one, oh no, there's something in there now to kind of hold them in place. That is handy. So, like the Jane Davenport markers, they have a, and actually like the Pintel brush pens, they have a ring that you must first, you must first get past the ring, the one ring. However, there's no artificial stiffener in the bristles and they are a little bit, I don't know, a little bit weird. So, I am going to get started activating all these. They actually look quite a bit different from the old ones I used to have. And they've been rebranded with Speedball. So they're Bien Fang Speedball watercolor brush pins. And in our set of 12, we get, I got to count, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a blender. Okay, so we actually get 12 colors in a blender. And they don't feel like they hold as much as they used to. Okay, there we go. Getting it going, getting it started. So you just kind of squeeze, whoa, and let gravity do its part. And it really doesn't feel like there's a lot of ink in there. So these are the cheapest of the watercolor markers. In, in this form factor that I have reviewed. I actually took a look at the Mozart watercolor markers a while back. So go ahead and work on getting these going, reading them and read the package to you. We receive cadmium red hue, vermilion, orange, primary yellow, New Gamboge, sap green, hooker's green, primary blue, cerulean blue, lamp black, Burnt Umber, Quinacridone Magenta, and the Blending Pen. And these are watercolor brush pins with self-wicking color, so you're not really meant to do a whole lot of squeezing with these, it seems. 12 colors plus a blending pen. There's the Speedball branding. Paint in the brush. Turn it over. Painting Tips and Techniques Guide. This is written so tiny, or I'm getting so old. I think it's written so tiny. And I'm not wearing my glasses, so that's always, it's always a dual issue, so. Unscrew the brush assembly with a counterclockwise movement. Remove the white ring from the pen. Replace the brush assembly until it's it is securely attached to the paint reservoir. Practice over test paper by gently squeezing the sides of the paint reservoir to activate the pin flow. The paint flow. Continue to squeeze until the paint starts to appear in the brush bristles. Brush with each smooth, easy strokes. Paint wicks itself. If the brush goes dry, gently re-squeeze the brush to activate the flow of paint. For best performance, replace the cap after use or rinse the brush with clean water between uses. Hmm. Clean up. Wash with warm water and soap to remove from skin. May require light scrubbing for dried paint, wash, blah, blah, blah. Where am I? For dried paint, wash immediately for easier removal. Stain warning, colors will stain. Not removable from fabrics with washing. Colors are permanent and water resistant when dry. Whoa, these have changed a lot then. Uh, watercolor paper and pH neutral watercolor paper. So I guess that's like the two products they're kind of recommending that we use. All right, so I'm actually having trouble getting these things started. This orange is just like refusing and the bristles feel really loosely put in. Okay, there we go. So I am gonna get all of these going and I'll check back in with you guys. 
So I'm trying to get these done mostly off camera because I know this isn't very interesting to watch, but getting water brushes prepped like this is one of my least favorite parts of these kind of reviews. And these are some of the trickiest ones I've ever encountered. Plus the bristles, I guess because they're a self-wicking uh, watercolor brush, but they feel kind of loose in the body, which makes me concerned that they're gonna kind of shed bristles all over the place. The rebranding kind of gives me some hope. Um, I'm gonna try and dig up some of the old BN fangs I used to have, but I may have tossed them because they were pretty much dead. So the only reason I would have kept them around is for review comparison purposes. But you see, I'm really working at this brush to get the blue to come out. And then when it does, it's gonna just, well, it's gonna make a big mess and then I'm gonna have to go grab a Q-tip to clean out the cap. So I know these are kind of aimed at younger artists and uh, I know that kind of their competition, they're like a step above the Crayola um, brush pins or watercolor brushes, which I've also checked out and I need to do the field test for those and I actually kind of like them. Um, they're a step above that and I know Elmer has Paintastic, so they're kind of in that league and I haven't actually checked out the Paintastics because I've only seen them online sold in like like princess sets with six colors or dino sets with six colors and I can't find like a good basic set of 12. You guys have seen me working at this. I think, you know, gee whiz. Anyway, my point is that these are for younger artists, not necessarily for adult artists. And um, I'm just having a really hard time getting some of these markers activated. I don't know what is up with this blue, in fact. But I think this sort of difficulty is definitely worth mentioning. I've been working on it for like a minute now. Um, definitely worth mentioning in a review because it's going to affect, I feel like it's gonna affect the enjoyment factor for an artist or a learning, a younger artist, etc., Or someone who's like maybe interested in dabbling with these for brush lettering or a hobby, you know, might have arthritis or, I'm just gonna have to come back to this one. But yeah, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be that hard to get started. And I don't remember them being that hard to get started a few years ago when I, well, about 10 years ago when I messed with them. Let's see if we can get this one going. And I can feel there's like a breather tube in there too, which would explain kind of how the self wicking mechanism works. <sighs> really? Are all of these gonna be really difficult? <laughs> Okay, there we go. And that one wasn't even that that difficult compared to some of the other ones. So we'll go back to the blue and what seemed to work with that was like a sustained? Is there, yeah, there's liquid in there. I can't, I just can't get it. Like a sustained effort and I, anyway. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, I know some of you might be thinking about these for a younger artist in your life, or you're thinking about these maybe for yourself and you're an older artist. I don't really necessarily know or presume to know. I'd love to know if you want to tell me, but I don't really presume to know why, how some people find my stuff. But I will say that, you know, that's like an, a ridiculous amount of effort to get it kind of going. And uh, of the watercolor brush pins I have reviewed, these have been the hard, most difficult to get started. However, they've had less waste than like the mermaid markers or the, or the, um, the Pentel brush pins. So I'm gonna finish getting the last two done. And I'll see you guys in a minute. So I've got all but two of these activated and I've really been trying and not having much success. I'm having a lot of difficulty with the magenta and with the cerulean blue to the point where my hands really hurt. And uh, I'm bringing this up because I do think this is important. If you're struggling this much to get an art supply started, there's something kind of wrong. There's something flawed with the design here, especially because other 
manufacturers have got it kind of figured out. These are definitely the hardest to get started. And I, this is really like, I could love, at this point I could love these. I could be like, these are great and they're very inexpensive. So you should get them except getting them started is a chore. I'm gonna have to go find an adult and see if they can help me. So here's something else really interesting. These literally just came in today from Amazon, right? This is the blender marker. I was like, oh, it looks interesting. I haven't seen a clear blender marker. It'll give me kind of an idea of how these are put together, right? Well, it has the seal on it. So I assume there's like a blender solution, usually glycerin and water. But guess what? There's a crack in it. Can you guys see that? There's a crack in it. So um, there is nothing in this. And uh, I don't even know how I would, I could like maybe use silicone grease to kind of like fake, fake it, but we'll use this to dike. Okay, so this is the breather tube. And then this is just a regular, not a regular, I mean, it's a water brush body, but I wouldn't necessarily say like your run of the mill. I'm looking for one of my water brushes, in fact. Okay, so that's a Jane Davenport water brush, right? That's a Pentel Aquash water brush, right? They're all, they're all very similar. So what I'm betting this had in it was either just plain old water or what I really think was in it was glycerin and water. So I'm wondering, I hear the liquid inside the blue, the cerulean and the magenta. And I'm gonna clean off some space so we can take a look, see. So there's no cracking. Let's, let's do a little surgery, which is always the best thing to do when you're recording at midnight. Uh, so I'm getting some blue on my hands. So, you know, you could say, well, we won't go there, but so I can remove this. All right. So here is our breather tube. It does not want to come out. I don't want to touch it. There we go. Okay. So I know that's an integral part of how this works. And by removing it, I may end up with a leaky disaster mess. As an adult, I fully see. And then you take the breather tube out and it's so much easier. Oh, there we go. Look, it's leaking. So I can try to replace the breather tube. I could try to replace the breather tube or I can put silicone grease on the threads so that it's less prone to just dripping everywhere. But I've got that marker kind of started maybe. And it's so much easier to squeeze when the breather tube is not in there. So parents, if you're buying this for yourself, or for a kid, be prepared. You're gonna have to do some surgery, quite possibly. Okay, are you working now? It seems less leak leaky, weekly. We'll see, I'd even tried running this under water because sometimes with like finicky brush pins, if you run it under water, um, if some ink kind of dried up at the top of the brush, you know, that I'll have to clean everything up after I, Finish that. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with magenta. Using these beautiful, I think of them as my YouTube nails. I realize you guys don't see my face a whole lot. So I was like, I'll start doing something with my nails. And now my hands are like all, all blued. I really thought this was gonna be an easy unbox. This here we go. That's the magenta. It looks like it's absorbed some of the... Let's see. We'll see how and where and when and we'll figure this out. Okay, this is going to do the exact same thing that blue did where the ink slash dye is going to get into the times when we deform the, I mean, the threads of the, like when you screw it together, see, when you deform the plastic and then it's gonna get leaky, leaky, leaky. And you can use silicone grease and kind of help with that. And that's something, you can find that at hardware stores. That's something most fountain pen people will have on hand because, you know, 
you need it when you do eyedropper conversions. Didn't think I was gonna ever need it for, oh, it's leaking everywhere. Oh, whoa, whoa, my hands are super dirty. I'm gonna have to clean my desk. You're here for the art supplies, but I know you guys stay for all the theatrical numbers and the blood and gore. All right, I'm gonna go get this all cleaned up and then hopefully we can swatch. All right, guys, so since this thing is broken anyway, I thought we might as well run some weird science. I have here a cup of water. I have here some vegetable glycerin. I have here some silicone grease, a small eyedropper, and a Q-tip, so why not, right? So, I am just gonna eyeball this. Vegetable glycerin is usually added as like a retardant, like a drying retardant, um, to like Tombow ABT blending markers, for example, right? In fact, I have one right here. It's just usually water and vegetable glycerin or sometimes like sorbitol, something that will kind of slow down the drying properties enough that you can blend. So I'm going to stir, 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 stir. And I probably should have done hot water because then it would have actually gone into solution, but I'm kind of mixing it up here. And yes, this is one of the tiny shot glasses from my stream when I did miniature painting. Now, now that we've got it somewhat mixed up, we'll go ahead, injectify. Now we still got that, oh, that crack just gets worse. Nice, this is not gonna work. That's okay. So we're gonna use the silicone grease, which is inert. In fact, my mat is made of the same stuff, so I'm gonna actually be very careful around it because it will actually start to melt. I'm gonna put a nice big doll up there and in plumbing this is used to help prevent leaks and in fountain pens. It's used for the same thing because fountain pen inks tend to be very leaky, very escaping. And, and then I'm just gonna kinda smooth it down, remove some of the excess. A Q-tip is not really our best option here, but it's what I've got, All right? I could even use an O-ring from my fountain pen kit, but I really hate to waste good materials on bad art supplies. And these are bad because it was, it arrived broken. Okay, so just set that aside. I have no idea how well that will work. I have no idea whether or not we will be able to get this started or what, or if it'll leak, I'm gonna be kind of gentle with it. I use silicone grease on one of my Jane Davenport mermaid markers because one of the, like, fresh out of the box, I think it's like, that's the gold one in the um, sun bleach kit. Well, anyway, one of them arrived DOA and very leaky, kind of like this. So it's neat, because you can see it actually working with the breather tube, as you squeeze it, a bubble will go up, and fills the breather tube. All right, so that actually, oh, did, have I been dripping the whole time and y'all didn't tell me? Thanks a lot, guys. So anyway, I think I kind of fixed that, so I'm gonna go ahead and start swatching. So, we have our brush pins mostly set up. They're still kind of a little, little meh. We did a hack job on the blender pen. So this is not, this set is not voting well, y'all. I've got here some Canson mixed media paper. So I'm going to do, I think, just regular swatches, one for each color. Then I will blend out using a water brush with just water in it. And then I'm gonna try the combination that I just mixed up and we'll see we can't really judge the blendability based on that. I guess we could try with my Tombow ABT too. We'll see, we'll see. And I used to use these pretty regularly and I didn't mind them then and I'm not liking them now. There's like a greasy feeling to them, which is not, not super exciting. 
Some of them are harder to get working. I have a feeling they're dye-based. I would bet money they're dye-based. Most of these are dye, most of these kind of markers are dye-based. So, with all those complaints on my lips, now's a perfect time. Oh, really? This yellow isn't even going. What a blooper reel. There we go. Just drip everywhere. What a perfect time to thank my wonderful patrons on Patreon for making these sort of reviews possible. I use the Patreon funds, the majority of my Patreon funds for a couple of different things. I use them to purchase materials to review. I use them to pay guest post writers, like guest writers for my blog. And if there's ever any money left over, I use them to pay the editor who edits my video. Otherwise that comes out of pocket. So thank you so much to my patrons. I hope you guys are laughing up a storm at how, how tortured, how attacked I feel right now. <laughs> these really terrible watercolor brush pens and these are awful. But maybe, maybe you guys have learned how to troubleshoot these sort of pens because of this video. Maybe you guys have learned how to maybe revitalize a pen or two because of this video. I don't know, maybe some good has come from me from me suffering. And if that's the case, I am really happy because that's the great thing about messing with terrible art supplies sometimes is that you really learn a lot and you end up learning how to salvage things. So these feel really dry for watercolor brush pens. And that Quinn, quote unquote, Quinn magenta is just a hideous color, like just really bad. And I apologize that you guys can't see it clearly. Let me rearrange my desk in such a way that hopefully you can. It's been a long recording. No, I can't. Wow, my notebook is actually a little too big for my camera surface. surface. And look, it just bleeds all over the place. I am going to go through so many paper towels for this video. The things I suffer through. Do it on camera. I'll make y'all watch. Make you suffer too. Just kidding. All right, so let's go ahead and do the first of our blend out tests. I think these are gonna go to somebody else in a burn it box. Cause they're, oh wow, it's already, it's leaking a lot. I should have put silicone grease on this too, I guess. So parents, be aware and be wary of these things. Already you can see they're messy, they're frustrating, they're leaky. They are no fun. So these are gonna get a big old no-no. Maybe I just got a terrible batch. All right, so starting all over again, we're gonna blend out with water. And I'll clean it out on a paper towel. Honestly, fighting with these things is just kind of like worn me out. I don't have any energy <laughs> left. Kind of tempted to be like, I'll see you guys tomorrow and just finish it off camera. Which I'm sure would make some of you guys happy. And then some of you guys are like, no, we want to see you suffer. And for these, I'm kind of go, oh, oh, I used the wrong one. I used the wrong blender. I used the, the brand new, never before tested. But you can work glycerin plus water technique. When I meant to use just water. Persecuted, that's the word I was looking for earlier. These markers make me feel persecuted. <laughs> And I'm sure some brush letterer has done just a simply beautiful job with these markers and never disclosed what a PIT, PETA they are, how frustrating they can be. Truly a burn it box item when they explode and get all over your hands and two arrive dead and one of them arrived empty. Definitely think these are dye based. And that is primary blue. Yeah, I'd call that a primary blue. Almost call it a phthalo, but primary blue, primary blue, my primary blue, I'll buy. Yeah. 
Oh, and you guys can't see anything I'm doing. I mean, so far, none of the colors have like split into the individual dyes, which is nice. Um, better than the Akashia brush pins where that was the case. But I may have also used too much water with those. This is a very old review. Okay, one more, and it's the leaky one. Ugh, oof. And it leaked on me again. Oh, y'all. Help, send help. Send an adult. Send some silicone grease. Send someone to save me. I'll patch that up tonight before I do any sort of field testing with these so that I don't. And I get my hand, my hands feel like all sticky and gross. I think that's from the glycerin. Okay. Let's, I don't have it in me to do the Tombow test. I apologize. We're going to test it with my mixture, which is mostly water, some glycerin. We'll see if that makes any difference. Maybe I should have added more glycerin. I don't know. I've never, I have never done that. And most companies are not eager to disclose their water to glycerin proprietary mixture ratios. In fact, what I might do is, cause I'm getting really annoyed with these things. I might just finish these swatches and check in with you guys tomorrow and do some intermarker blending and that sort of thing. And that way you guys actually get a full unbox and swatch review. And that way I don't, I don't get in trouble for <laughs> losing my mind on the YouTubes. Self wicking. I don't know how I feel about that. I guess as like the brushes, the bristles rotate around in like the little socket, they kind of jiggle the water loose. Kind of like some of those, like those pet balls, like the pet water waterers you know that have a little ball in them like as your pet like nuzzles it it drips water on them so maybe that's how it works sort of i mean i think i think my glycerin water mixture is solid but this is certainly not working for like self self wicking so i'll probably do the water and glycerin mixture any water brush designated with that on it. And we can play with that at a later date. See, I've talked about that for like at least a year now doing that. And it took, it took a broken set of Bien Fang slash Speedball. Why did Speedball partner? They do like printmaking stuff. Why did they, and, and regrettable dip pen inking stuff too, because their nibs are not great. Why did they partner with this? Bet there's a crack in that magenta as well. And I just couldn't see it. I was looking for it, but it doesn't mean it's not there just because I didn't find it. So this feels, I think if I were to replicate the mixture in these pens, because these pens feel like kind of gluey or soapy, which would be the glycerin. Um, I should have gone heavier, like maybe 25% glycerin to 75% water solution. I do not like the design of these water brushes. These feeder tubes are a huge annoyance. So I have a feeling these would not actually last very long. They feel kind of light and given the feed, the breather tube apparatus, like once it seems like once it's no longer at ink or water level, then it's not going to be able to suck in ink for you to use. It's kind of excited about these two. I've been playing around with so many water brushes lately and really getting the hang of them. And then I saw that they would kind of like rebranded. So I was really kind of excited that we were going to see some changes. And I remember liking these too, which is another kind of like, what? At least the brown's a good brown. Like that's, that's usually with these kind of water brushes or brush markers, water-based markers, you know, dye-based markers, your browns are really lackluster. But that's a decent, that's a really decent brown. And it doesn't separate out either, which is nice. 
All right, I'm gonna go fix that magenta and I will see you guys tomorrow for some further testing. Tomorrow my time, not your time. Okay, so it is a brand new day. I've got a brand new attitude and look, I even found one of these brand new old Bien Fang water brushes so we can kind of compare them. I thought, actually I don't feel the breather tube in here. I thought there was more, oh gosh, what is up with this thing? It's like leaky, oh, and it leaked on here. Awesome, A plus. I washed it off too, so it means this is leaking and it feels like glycerin. Okay, so. Old body, new body, not much different. This doesn't feel like it's got a breather tube in it. I don't think they've changed a whole lot. No, they look pretty much the same. And this is from like 10 years ago. Because I bought it in undergrad and I still had it around for whatever reason. So that is going right into the trash. That sound you heard was it nose diving into the garbage with its leaky, nasty self. So we still have a couple things left to do with these disaster pieces. I'm gonna try and get some of that glycerin off my hands using just a little bit of water that I have in a spray bottle. I cannot stand nasty hands. So one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna do a gradient blend. Let's see if we can do that. You can, I believe, and I may need to go back and demonstrate. Uh, you can do it with the Pentel brush pens, which I've shown you guys. And I think you can do it with the, oh, it's so full of blister and it is so soapy. Let me see if I can get it in enough that you can see how soapy these little dudes are. The vermilion is just like the saddest, palest, weakest vermilion I've ever seen. So far, the color into color blending isn't terrible. It's better than like, say, your Crayola Super Tips, which have no blending at all, but it is pretty much worse than the blending markers from Crayola. It's like, and by that I mean the, um, the brush and detail markers, as well as the brush tip markers that came out before that. It's worse than the Pentel brush pins. It's worse than the Mermaid markers, so. It's even worse than the Crayola children's, uh, like the paints in the brush kind of brush pens where it's not even paint, it's dye. Like there's no real liquid, it's got a wick. You can see this is kind of soapy. And some of the colors aren't bad. It's just the formulation. I thought they would have improved that over the years and it seems like they really haven't. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna be a little fair. We're gonna start over with the green. And also they just have like an anemic ink flow. It's a self wicking brush. You can squeeze it a little bit to get a little bit more, but it's just never, there's never like a juicy, generous ink flow. It's always kinda, kinda thirsty. Like you always want a little bit more color than you're getting or a little more ink flow than you're getting. And they're very cheap. So, I mean, they're probably some of the cheapest brush pins on the market. But I also feel like you're kind of getting what you're paying for and in a pinch they could work, but they're also just really disappointing. So if you're only gonna get one set, I would really recommend saving up your money and getting a nicer set. Oh, that, look at that, it still leaks. So. See. What I'm gonna do, I know I'm gonna have to go back and field test these and I, I shudder to think of it. I'm going to apply some swatches. I'm gonna let them dry so that they're not even glossy on the paper. They're just fully dry. Actually, I want two. So I wanna try activating it with the hack I did last night on the, the blender and I wanna use it with water. Pick one from each kind of major color family. However, I acknowledge that I am not the end all be all only opinion that ever existed or ever mattered, especially when it comes to art supplies. So if you have a differing experience or a different opinion of these markers, if you figured these markers out, 
and you can get them to bend to your will, let me know in the comments below and show me, send me a link to your work. I wanna see these actually succeed so that I can know that I am still a work in progress, who still needs to up her game. Conversely, if you've got a nightmare horror story about these brush pins, if you dislike them, if you struggled with them, if you fought with them, if you had them explode all over your art or all over your hands or all over your table, let me know that in the comments as well. I look forward to reading both your crowing triumphs and your withering defeats and taking solace in the defeats and feeling a little shameful in the triumphs. So I'm gonna let these kind of dry out all the way and I'll be back. Okay, these have had a chance to kind of dry. I have found in the past that watercolors, especially brush type watercolors, once they've had a chance to dry are not nearly as quick to reactivate. So I've got my handy dandy Bien Fang hack. Just gonna squeeze it because it's so hard to get enough liquid out that I feel confident blending. Okay, so we're scrubbing at it. I can actually see the water on the paper. I'll move my hand so you guys can see, and it's not moving. Can't even get enough water in there to clean the brush. Doing the same, really scrubbing at the orange. So that's not moving. Doing the same with the yellow, some movement. and squeezing the heck out of the brush off camera to get some, there we go, to get some water and glycerin in it going. I'm gonna play around in the future with water to glycerin ratios with water brushes and see if we can't come up with something that allows for a controlled blend without too much water. Like I said earlier, I think 75 water, 25 glycerin is probably the ideal. It's not gonna, although honestly, my little hack with this water brush worked pretty well. So I don't know what the heck's going on with this magenta here. And that is not a Quinn magenta. All right, so some colors, more movement than others. The blue, a lot of movement. Black, some movement. Brown, some movement. Yellow, decent movement. Magenta, some movement. Red and orange, not really any movement. I'm gonna try this water. I don't really suspect it's gonna be different just because my glycerin water mix was so water heavy. And we're still testing on Canton Biggie XL mixed media paper, which was purchased with funds accrued from my Patreon for the purposes of these reviews. So thank you so much to my patrons. Okay, so water didn't really make a whole lot of difference. I did clean my water brush in between. Um, I did have some cross color pollution, you know, it happens. Anyway, these are not, these are not, 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 not the water brushes you guys are looking for. I don't always know what you guys are looking for, but I promise you these are not it. They're not the cheapest. In fact, I'm gonna get some numbers for you guys. So for this set of 12, these are 20 on Prime. We're gonna look at the Crayola watercolor markers. Brush pins, actually. So let's, oh, hmm, <laughs> give me a sec, you guys. The Crayola brush pins, you get a set of five, only five. You can get them, wow, holy smokes, the price is very all over the place. I mean, let me see the, all the buying options. So you can get them on Prime four to five days for $5.39 with $0 estimated tax um, fulfilled by Amazon. So that's like a dollar a marker, whereas with these, a dollar and some change, like a dollar, 10 cents per marker, we'll say. With these, let's see, 12 for $19, it's still approximately like a dollar 50 maybe per marker. So the Crayola ones, which are, you guys will be able to check them out on the channel if that's not available already. They have a hard body. You can't squeeze it to get more ink and it's got a compressed fiber nib. Um, but 
They're much more generous ink flow. They are much more flexible. I just like them a lot better than these. And they're for little kids. And these are for adults and not as little kids. Let's see. Give you some more comparisons. Let's look at the Jane, come on you. The Jane Davenport mermaid markers. Those are available on Amazon now. So for 12 colors, you can pay $24 and get them on Prime. And those are way, way, way better than these. A thousand times better than these. Still use a brush pin, a water brush body. Still very water reactive, but they are way better than these. Um, like I said, a little more expensive, but I promise you I've used them. I like them okay. Way better than these, way better investment. Plus there's also like three additional, no, four additional sets, two with six, Shipwrecked and Sun Bleach. Shipwrecked has darker colors, Sun Bleach has lighter colors. And then there's like the shimmering ones with Shimmering Sky, two sets of four, and Celestial Skies. So like, even if you don't like the base colors, you could pick up one of the other sets and you might like that a little bit better. Now the Pentel brush pens are really expensive. Uh, let me pull that up for you guys. So the 18 color set on Amazon, which if you if, the, if that video isn't available now, it should be soon, is $84, 18 colors. I really, really like those. I really like using them not only for like doodling and for sketching, but also for watercolor techniques. Just don't use them on the Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper and they're great. So, I mean, those are much more expensive, but they're gonna last you a lot longer. Either one of those markers that I recommended, the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers or the Pintel brush pin markers are refillable. Uh, you can buy the refill cartridges for the Pintel markers and you can refill the Jane Davenports with like your radiant liquid watercolors, any sort of dye based watercolor like that. With these, I mean, it's really such a hack job. job. It's a really, it's a big pain in the butt. You'd have to clean them out completely, fill them with something that's very fluid because they have flow issues. It's just, they're not worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this unbox, this, yeah, unbox and swatch. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. I know even when I don't like a product, um, sometimes that's just user error, but I have used watercolor brush pins a lot on this channel and a lot over on the blog. So I can tell you guys, it's not just user error. These are just not good. So please skip them and get something better. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.